When you speak about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? His shyness and with his shyness, with his haya, comes shyness, softness, modesty, humility. And then the other concept, the other defining feature that you have about him is his generosity. To the point that the Rasulullah would call people to give sadaqah, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was always one of the first to come forward. Uthman radiallahu anhu arda, he was the ruler of the Muslims. And at night, after Salat al-Isha, he would cover himself up so nobody could recognize him. And he would enter the masjid and he would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in one rak'ah complete the entire Qur'an. By the time it was close to the time of Subh of Salat al-Fajr and he ended his Salah, he had completed the entire Qur'an. After Salat al-Subh, very often they would find him reciting Qur'an until Salat al-Zuhr. They used to say to him, Uthman, take it easy on yourself. How much Qur'an are you reciting? And he said, if our hearts were pure, they would never have enough of the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ said that you will see after me, after I am gone, you will see after me times of tribulation, times of trouble, and there will be disagreement and discord amongst the Muslims. So a man said, so who is the man we should follow? Who is the one we should follow behind during those times? So the Prophet ﷺ said that upon you, obligatory on you is to follow Al-Ameen, the trustworthy one and his companions. And he pointed to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from water? And he said, Naam ya Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from food? And he said, Naam ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from food. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from praying Salah in my masjid? And he said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from praying Salah in your masjid. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then says to Uthman Radiallahu Anhu, the one who he loved so much to the point that he spent a whole night making dua for his pleasure. The one who Uthman Radiallahu Anhu became mute at his death. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says to him, Good news, O Uthman. You're going to break your fast with us tonight. Subhanallah. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, who happens to be the successor of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. This man was the son of Affan. Affan was one of the leaders of Quraysh. He was a great man, well connected in Quraysh. And he was a person who was so powerful. He was related so deeply to those in Quraysh that Uthman ibn Affan was related to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his mother and he was related to Abu Sufyan ibn Harb through his father. From the Umayyad people, this was Uthman ibn Affan. As he was born in a very wealthy home, a very noble home, he was a child who was fair in complexion, very good looking. He was loved by Quraysh as he grew up a toddler and a teenager. They loved him so much, the people of Quraysh. They enjoyed his company so much so that some of the people used to actually say, may Allah love you the way Quraysh used to love Uthman. And when he grew up, subhanallah, he was a person who was wealthy, not only because he was born in a wealthy home, but he became a businessman of note. And he became known as one of the wealthiest of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. But he had certain qualities. He was a very shy and generous person. How did he become a Muslim? Something very interesting. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu spoke to him and told him, Oh Uthman, you are an intelligent man. You are a sharp individual. Don't you know that worshipping these idols is wrong? They do not bring for you any goodness. They cannot protect you from any harm and they cannot harm you as well. So don't you realize and understand that? Do you know that there is a prophet in our midst who has called us to worshiping our maker alone? The one who has made us. Do you know that he has called us towards goodness? He has asked us to leave all the bad habits that our forefathers have been engrossed in and that we have been ingrained within our culture. 
and Uthman ibn Affan looked at him and says, who is this prophet? He said, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He said, you're trying to tell me that as sadiqul Amin is the one who is now saying he's a prophet. as sadiqul Amin was the title of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the truthful, the trustworthy. So Abu Bakr said, yes, indeed. And at that moment, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was passing. So he greeted Uthman ibn Affan and he tells him, Oh Uthman, I am asking you to come forth to worshiping Allah alone. I call you to Islam. I am a messenger of Allah calling you towards worshiping your maker alone. He said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I bear witness in what you are calling towards and I bear witness that you are a prophet. Immediately, no questions asked, nothing happened. This was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. As wealthy as he was, as powerful a figure as he was, he was a very influential figure in Quraysh. Although he was slightly younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so happy, but it made certain people very, very upset. Who became angry? Number one was Al Hakam ibn Abi al As. Abu Jahl became very angry. He said, How can a man from our clan accept Muhammad? And this man is from a noble home. No ways, I'm not going to leave this man. So he started persecuting his own relative. And he told him, I am not going to leave you, O Uthman, until you leave Muhammad. And Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu says, I will never ever quit Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever he is calling towards is correct, it is right. Do not let your position, your power, your authority cloud your understanding of what is right and wrong. So Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, there is an incident that occurred at that particular time because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's daughter Ruqayya binti Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was engaged to the son of Abu Lahab known as Utbah ibn Abi Lahab. She was known as a very, very good girl brought up by Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was such a good girl in Quraysh that she was known because of her character, nobility, conduct, chastity, and so on. But what happened is Abu Lahab decided to go against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the degree that he told his son to release Ruqayya binti Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't want you to marry this woman anymore. So they were engaged, but that engagement was broken. And when that happened, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offering himself, asking for the hand of his daughter in marriage. And Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha was so happy. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was delighted and he got his daughter Ruqayya married to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhuma. And when you have two beautiful people like this coming together, people used to even write poetry about their relationship with each other. And from that relationship, you have a son, Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Everything is going as well as it could possibly go. Uthman radiallahu anhu enjoys a special relationship with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's married to his daughter. He has the grandson of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then Ruqayya radiallahu anha gets sick. All of a sudden she's taken by a fever. On top of that, she's taken by this fever only days before Badr. And on the same day, that the Muslims are given the victory of Badr, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha passes away. The day of great joy and the day of great sadness. And then to add to that pain, just a short time afterwards, Abdullah, his son, is walking and he is pecked in the face by a bird and he's infected and he dies too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was so depressed, obviously, I mean, he lost his wife and his child just like that. And it got to the point that Uthman would come to the salah. He would not neglect his prayer. He would not neglect those things, but he would avoid communication with people because of his sadness. And this hurt the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He wanted to show Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu how much he loves him. So he goes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, what's wrong with you, O Uthman? What's making you so depressed? And Uthman radiallahu anhu answers with the obvious first, obviously the death of Ruqayya, something else is getting me down too. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, what is that, Ya Uthman? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, my connection, 
My relationship with you, my kinship with you was severed by her death. But you want to know how truthful he was in that statement? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me with an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to marry my other daughter, Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha to him with the same dowry. And that's where he gets the nickname, the Nurain, the possessor of two lights. He was distinguished in marrying two daughters of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Six years later, she passes away too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu once again is sad. And listen to how much the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves him. He says to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Wallahi, if I had 40 daughters, I would marry each and every single one of them to you until each and every single one of them would die and I would be left with no daughters. What made Uthman so great, radiallahu anhu? Whenever the Prophet sallallahu showed the Sahaba a way to enter Jannah, Uthman was first in line. Immediately he would go and seize that opportunity. When the Muslims first came to Al-Madinah, after the Hijrah, they found that the sources of fresh water were small. There were few places to get fresh water. And one of these places was a well, the well known as the well of Ruma. And this was owned by another man from another tribe. So the Prophet ﷺ said to this man, would you like to sell this well and then trade it for a well in Jannah? Because this man used to charge a fee. Anyone who wanted water from the well, he would charge them money to take water. So those who were poor amongst the Sahaba, they would not be able to get water from this well. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, this is the only source of income I have for me and for my family. I have nothing else except this well to charge people money for. So then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that who is the one who will buy this well of Ruma and then because of it earn his place in Jannah. So Uthman goes to buy the well from the guy. The guy says, I'll sell you the well for 50,000 gold dinars. Uthman said, how about this? I don't want to buy the whole thing. I'll buy half of it. How do you buy half of a well? Easy. You use it on one day, I use it the other day. That's how you buy half a well. So the man agreed. So how much will you sell me half the well? They agreed for 12,000. Now what happens now when Uthman owns this well? And the Prophet said, who will buy the well of Roma? And he will have a Jannah. Uthman goes to buy it. He buys half of it. Now, the guy now, he used to overcharge people. How much do you think he's going to charge people on his day? Nothing, because Uthman said, on my day, it's free. See what happened? So now nobody is coming to him on his day. So now he comes to Uthman, like, now I'll sell you the other half. <laughs> All right, what do you want to sell me the other half of your worthless well? I don't really need it. I've got half of it. What do I need the other half for? Smart businessman. On another occasion, the Masjid, Masjid al-Nabawi, built by the Muslims in Medina, it became too small because so many people were becoming Muslim now that the Masjid was not able to suit the capacity. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, who is the one who will buy this land belonging to so-and-so? and then add it to the masjid so that the masjid may be expanded so that he will have his place in Jannah. Immediately Uthman ibn Affan went and he bought that land for 20,000 dirham and then it was given and added to the masjid. On another occasion, the Prophet ﷺ told the Muslims that whoever buys a slave, a Muslim slave, and then sets him free, Allah will free him from the hellfire. For every limb of that slave, every limb of that person will be saved. So Uthman ibn Affan, when he heard this, he made it his practice that every Jummah, he would buy slaves and set them free. Until the point the historians say, he set free over a thousand slaves. And they lost track of how many slaves he bought. Because every Jummah who would do this. Radiallahu anhu. To the point that we even see in Hudaybiyah, when Rasulullah sallallahu sends Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, to negotiate with Quraysh. He was a noble man of Quraysh as an ambassador from the Muslims. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was held up over there with Quraysh. And the rumor reaches the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Uthman passed away. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has an unarmed group of men. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes a bay'ah, an allegiance, a pledge from each and every single one of the believers that we will fight on behalf of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 
And to the extent that after Rasulullah Wasallam took allegiance from everybody, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes his right hand and he takes his left hand and he clasps his hand together and he says, and this is for Uthman. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says, oh how I wish to have been the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on that day. And then of course it turned out that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had not passed away and that was just a rumor but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verily there is no doubt about it every single person who took allegiance to you that day under the tree in Bay'atul Ridwan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them one of the moments that where Uthman radiallahu anhu stood out was the preparation of the army of Tabuk and now the Prophet needs to build up this army so the Prophet stood up and he said who will prepare the army of an Usra distress, difficulty, and for him will be Al-Jannah. So Uthman radiallahu anhu got up and he said, I will donate a hundred camels, reins, ropes, everything you need. You just have to get on and go. 100% ready to go. Sat down. Fundraising, we need more. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu got up and he said, I will give another hundred. Then he sat down. Then the Prophet needed more. Uthman radiallahu anhu got up again and another hundred. And it is narrated that he got up seven times. One narration says he got up ten times. So like he bought Al-Jannah seven times over or ten times over by preparing for the army of Allah. And then brings a thousand dinars and puts them on, into the garment of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ is sitting there and he's just saying nothing that Uthman does after today will harm him. He bought Jannah for himself. From amongst those things that made Uthman ibn Affan so great was his great shyness, his great modesty, his great haya in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the Prophet ﷺ was at home and he was lying down and some of his legs, some part of his legs were uncovered. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu knocked on the door and asked for permission to enter. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him permission. And so Abu Bakr entered and the Prophet ﷺ did not change his posture, nor did he cover up his legs. So Abu Bakr came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ and then he left. And then Umar came and he asked for permission and he entered and he spoke to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet did not change his posture, nor cover his legs. And then Umar, he left. And then some time later, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, he came and he knocked on the door and he asked permission. As soon as the Prophet ﷺ heard the voice of Uthman, he sat up and then he covered his legs and he adjusted his clothes and then gave permission. So Uthman came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ and then he left. So Aisha radiallahu anha, who was in the house, she said, Ya Rasulullah, when Abu Bakr and Umar came, you did not change your posture. But when Uthman came, you sat up and you adjusted your clothes. Why did you do this? So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Should I not feel shyness and modesty from a man from whom even the angels are shy? That the shyness of Uthman was born from his awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is so great, so majestic, so perfect, and I am so weak and disobedient and sinful. And so this would cause him to be shy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that the most true in his modesty from my nation is Uthman. The most sincere in his modesty and his shyness is Uthman radiallahu anhu. That he was so humble in his talk, so modest and soft-spoken, that you would have to come so close to him just to hear what he was trying to tell you. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he says, I once saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa raising his hands from the beginning of the night until the end of the night saying, Oh Allah, I am pleased with Uthman, so be pleased with him. This tale of love between the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this story of love, you can only imagine how it was like when he passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was so much so that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that what's narrated about him in the books of Sirah, he became silent to the point that people thought he was mute. He was so taken aback by the death of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he no longer was able to speak. Uthman ibn Affan, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, there came a year of drought. 
the drought was so severe that the people were hungry. They were, they were literally dying of hunger. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu told him, pray to Allah, pray for rain and so on. That day, people had heard that there is a great caravan of Uthman coming from the northern part of the peninsula. And it has in it a lot of food and a lot of provision. And sometime later in the afternoon, a huge caravan consisting of 1000 camels pitched up into Medina Munawwara and it literally stopped at the door of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. And the people had come out and they started helping getting the produce down and all the merchandise. Most of it was actually food stuff. And Uthman ibn Affan emerged and the businessmen of Medina Munawwara who had the money, they emerged and they said, Oh Uthman, we want to buy from you. The people are dying of hunger. We want to buy from you this, from this food. We will give you for every dirham that you spent two dirhams, which means we give you 100% profit. He said, No, I someone has offered me more. So they said, Okay, we give you more. He said, No, someone has offered me even more. So they said, Okay, we will give you even more. And they continued, he said, sorry, someone has offered me more than whatever you people have offered. They said, it cannot be. We are the business people of Medina Munawwara. We know we are the first to come to you. Who else has spoken to you? Nobody would be foolish to give you so much. He said, Allah has promised me that he will multiply it tenfold for me. They looked at him shocked. They said, what do you mean? He said, I make you witness that all these thousand camels you see here, I have donated them for the Muslimin. They can have them. I don't want a single dirham or dinar. This is between me and Allah. You people may have this. This was Uthman ibn Affan, the great hero, the man who spent. Subhanallah. Uthman, he once said, three things have been made beloved to me from this life. Out of this dunya, it's not wealth of power that I crave, but three things that I love. Feeding the one who is hungry and clothing the one who is naked and doesn't have clothes and reciting the Quran. So Uthman ibn Affan, he loved to spend his life, spending his time in the service of his brothers, feeding the weak and the needy and the, and the hungry, clothing those who had no clothes, helping those who were in need and spending his time reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because Uthman ibn Affan, Radiallahu anhu. He loved the Quran so much. It was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his name would forever be connected to the Quran. During the time of the Prophet, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, would teach the Quran in different ways. And he told the Sahaba that the Quran has been sent down in seven different dialects. The meaning is the same, but sometimes the words are different. And this was sent down as a mercy to the Muslims. Because the Arabs during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they did not speak the same dialect. They did not all speak the dialect of Quraysh. Different tribes had different ways of reciting and speaking Arabic. And these ways were taught by Jibreel to the Prophet ﷺ, and then he taught the companions these different ways. And the Sahaba ﷺ preserved these different dialects. And during the time of Uthman ﷺ, these Muslims from different parts of the world now joined. So in one of these places, Azerbaijan, the Muslims from Syria and the Muslims from Iraq. But when it came time to pray, they noticed the differences between their different ways of reciting. So one would say Maliki Yom ad -Din, and the other would say Maliki Yom ad -Din. And many of these people, they were new Muslims and they were not Arabs. They were Persians or other ethnicities. So they were not familiar with these differences amongst the tribes. They did not know that these differences were part of the Arabic language and things that were taught by the Prophet So they started to argue. So one of those who witnessed this argument was Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu, the great companion of the Prophet So as soon as he saw this arguing, he became scared that now the Muslims are following the way of the Jews and the Christians. So likewise now he was afraid the same thing would happen to the Muslims. So he left Azerbaijan and immediately he made his way to Al-Madinah. And when he reached Al-Madinah, he went to the Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhu, and he said, Ya Abir al-Mu'mineen, unite this nation upon one Quran. And then he told Uthman what happened. Uthman called a meeting of the major Sahaba, the leaders amongst the Sahaba. The Sahaba said, they said, you are our leader. 
You are the most learned, learned amongst us. You are the best of us. Give us your opinion. Uthman said, my opinion is that we make a standard version of the Quran that becomes a reference for all the Muslims. And then we make copies of this reference and we send it throughout the Muslim world. They will all have a single reference to go back to and judge what is the true word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the companions agreed that this is the right course of action. So Uthman then called for a copy of the Quran which had been kept that had been commissioned during the time of Abu Bakr and had been kept with the daughter of Umar. So he called for this copy to be brought and then he appointed four of the Sahaba to make a committee in charge of distributing these copies of the Quran. Zayd ibn Thabit, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Sa'id ibn al-As, and Abdurrahman ibn al-Harith. Four of the great Sahaba who were scholars of the Quran. And he said, look now at this copy of the Quran and preserve, write a copy that can encompass all of the different dialects that were revealed by the Prophet ﷺ. So they made these copies of the Quran. And then he sent these copies to different provinces throughout the Muslim world. And now one letter, one harf, one sound has been changed. And he sent a reciter of the Quran along with each of these copies to teach the people that this is the right way to recite the Quran. And then Uthman gave instructions that any other copy of the Quran that is different from this copy, it should be burned. At his time, they say the people were good, relations were good. Anyone who did not have, he provided for them. Sometimes with his own personal wealth, not necessarily the coffers of the Muslims. And so many different regions had now entered into the governorate of the Muslims. From amongst them, parts of Russia and Cyprus, Armenia and North Africa. So more and more areas of people had accepted Islam under the leadership of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. But people become jealous. A man known as Abdullah ibn Sabah, and he had started major issue against Uthman ibn Affan claiming that Uthman had appointed all his relatives as people who were the leaders of the various lands of the Muslims. Yet, those were appointed by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu before Uthman. And Uthman had not even changed the bulk of them. But this was just a fitna. This was a way of instilling problem that now the Muslims are growing. They have huge lands. The East and the West is all now turning to Islam. The best way to destroy the Muslims, internal conflict. So they started creating hatred against Uthman, saying that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was supposed to be the leader. And yet Ali himself says, Uthman is my leader. Subhanallah. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, would not crush that revolt. They continued this fitna. And you have these people, this fitna rising from all the corners of the Muslim world. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, does not act harshly towards them, but instead he replaces governors as they request. And he acts towards them with softness. Until they finally lay the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu under siege. So he comes up to the people of, uh, of Medina, and this is the last time he, he sees them, and he addresses them in a short speech. He tells them that indeed Allah has given you this dunya so that you can seek with it the hereafter, the next life. And He did not give it to you so you can be attached to it. Indeed, the dunya fades away and the akhirah remains. So do not be fooled by that which fades away and don't let it divert you from that which remains. For the dunya ends and the journey is to Allah. Fear Allah. For taqwa of him is a protection from his punishment. And beware of Allah's ghira, yani don't approach Allah's sanctified place. Stay with the jama'ah and don't become groups and mention the blessings of Allah upon you as you were enemies. So, uh, so he united your hearts and you became through his blessings brothers. And then he tells them to go out and to not offer any protection. And then he says, O people of Medina, I bid you farewell. And I ask Allah Azzawajal to give you a good Khalifa after me until Allah decreases his judgment. Nobody protect me. No one come to my defense. Not a single drop of blood will be shed because of me. So I'm going to my house and I'm going to stay there until I'm killed. That was the last khutbah. That was the last reminder of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Who at that point was 82 years old. Would be forbidden water from the same well that he purchased for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
would be forbidden to pray in the same masjid that he financed its expansion, the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, would be treated in the most humiliating manner. And this is something that the Messenger ﷺ, in many different ahadith, perhaps the most heart-wrenching incident of all, Aisha radiallahu anha says, and this is in Ahmed, an authentic hadith, that once the Messenger ﷺ told Uthman radiallahu anhu, come close. And he started to whisper into his ear. As he would whisper into his ear, Uthman radiallahu anhu would move away and Rasulullah would say, did you understand? And Uthman radiallahu anhu would say, yes. And Rasulullah would say, come close. And he would keep on whispering in his ear until the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu started to change colors. And Rasulullah kept on telling him, did you understand? He said, Naam ya Rasulullah, I understood, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so when this fitna comes, in which he prohibits the Sahaba from fighting on his behalf, and he says, I do not want a single drop of blood being shed in my cause. But still with that, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his children, Al-Hasan wal Hussein, to guard Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Az Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his son Abdullah ibn Zubair. So the children of the greatest Sahaba are guarding Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Uthman is telling them, do not shed a drop of blood in my cause. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is begging him that we have to foil this, this fitna, we have to foil this plot and he's consistently refusing and we saw the rudeness, the harsh hearts that these people had when they treated Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu worse than a prisoner would be, would be treated. And they started to come closer and closer on his house. And they set his gate on fire. And one man jumps into the back of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu's house. And he says, leave it and we will leave you. And Uthman radiallahu anhu wanted to leave the khilafah. But he was reminded by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, do not take off a garment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon you. And Uthman radiallahu anhu says to that man, Woe to you, Wallahi, I have never uncovered a woman in Jahiliyyah. Don't you know there are women in this house? I'm not the only one in this house. And that man became ashamed. And he left there, and he left the fitna, and he sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next incident that takes place is they started to throw stones in the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they started to try to pelt him with those stones. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says outside of his window, don't you know that in this house there are others than me and you might harm them? They said, we didn't throw the stones at you. He said, then who threw them? They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threw them at you. And he said to him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgrace you, you are a liar because if Allah threw a stone at me, he wouldn't have missed. And that person left the fitna and he sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they started to decide upon who would murder him. So first they send in a man and he comes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he raises his sword right in the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, where are you from? And he says, Banu Layf. Uthman radiallahu anhu said, you're not the one. And he said, why? He said, because Rasulullah sallallahu made dua for your tribe. That man puts down his sword and he runs away and he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day of Thursday, July 16th, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while he's reading Quran and he's sitting down, this 82 year old man, he dozes off and he falls asleep at the time of Salatul Asr. And he was fasting that day because it's the day of Thursday and that was the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to fast that day. And he sees in his dream Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam standing in front of him, smiling. And behind him is Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from water? And he said, Naam Ya Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from food? And he said, Naam Ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from food. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from praying salah in my masjid? And he said, Naam Ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from praying salah in your masjid. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then says to Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one who he loved so much to the point that he spent a whole night making dua for his pleasure. The one who Uthman radiallahu anhu became mute at his death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to him, Good news, O Uthman, you're going to break your fast with us tonight. SubhanAllah. And the people around Uthman radiallahu anhu, they see Al Hassan wal Hussein and the women in his household, they see the tears coming down his eyes. And he wakes up full of joy. And he relates his dream to the people. No sooner does he narrate his dream to his wife Na'ila radiallahu anha and Al Hassan wal Hussein and those who are around him, except that they storm the house. And as they storm the house and they stand in front of him, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sitting down, 82 years old, reading Surah Al Baqarah and not paying any attention to them. And the people take a moment and they stop. They look at him and they don't know what to do. Look at this man and his khushur. How could we kill this man? Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, who was caught up in the fitna, comes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he grabs his beard, about to strike him. And Uthman radiallahu anhu says, let go of my beard because your father used to honor it. When I meet your father in Jannah, I don't want to tell him that you were the one who killed me. And then these rebels, they came and they struck Uthman radiallahu anhu on the head with a piece of iron. And the blood began to pour from the head of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And the first place where the blood fell was on the Quran. And where on the Quran? On the verse, سَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah, That Allah will suffice you against them. And then one of them was about to strike him with a sword. And Uthman radiallahu anhu placed his hand high to protect himself. And he cut the hand of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And Uthman radiallahu anhu said, I swear by Allah, the hand that you have just cut off, it was the first hand to write the Quran. And then they placed the sword on the stomach of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And his wife, she came running. And she placed the hand between the sword and they cut off the finger of his wife. And then they pierced the stomach of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And after Uthman radiallahu anhu, an 82 year old man had passed away. One of the rebels, he jumped onto the chest of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he stabbed him six times. And he would say later, I stabbed him three times for the sake of Allah and three times for myself. And then they dragged the body of Uthman radiallahu anhu to the rubbish tip. And his wife Naila radiallahu anhu mentioned that his face was covered with blood. And I went into the house to find if there was anything I could cover his face with. But they had burnt everything. And then I took off my scarf and I placed it on his head. And all of a sudden I saw a person running in. And he was, came in hurriedly and I saw that this man who maybe a sister. And he removed the cloth from the man who had passed away. Who, who was the son-in-law of the Prophet Sallallahu twice over. And he removed the cloth and he slapped him upon his face. And the rebels were saying, no man can bury Uthman radiallahu anhu. And the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umm Habiba radiallahu anhu, she climbed onto the stairs of the Masjid Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, oh rebels, no, if you do not allow us to bury Uthman radiallahu anhu, then I, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, the widow of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, the beloved of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, the mother of the believers, will descend into the streets of Medina with my hair uncovered, and I will bury Uthman myself. She knew that no rebel would stand in front of the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when they were taking the body of Uthman radiallahu anhu to have it buried, they began to throw rocks at the body of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And then they wanted to bury him in Jannah al Baqi, but the rebels insisted that he be buried outside Jannah al Baqi. Although today his body is inside Jannah al Baqi. And a famous tabi'een called Amrata bin Arfa radiallahu anha mentions that when me and Aisha radiallahu anha came back from Hajj, she says, I saw this Quran. And I saw the blood over the ayah say, Allah, that Allah will be sufficient for you against them. And she swears by Allah that each one of these rebels died a disastrous death. 
upon occasion, Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullah alayhi was doing dua around the Kaaba and he saw a person holding on to the Kaaba and he was saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. But I swear that you will not forgive me. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak was astonished by this person's dua. And he said, Who are you? And he said, I am that person who shook the head of Uthman radiallahu anhu with the iron rod. And see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disfigured my hand. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak kicked him. And he said, go away for you are the worst of people. Abu Musa Ashari radiallahu anhu mentions that I came back from Sham. And I saw a group of people outside the masjid. Around a person whose hands were disfigured and whose feet were disfigured. And when I came close to this man, he said, Oh, Abu Musa Ashari, go away. And I thought, how did this man know me? And he said, you may not know me, but I know you. He said, I am the man who pierced Uthman radiallahu anhu with a knife. And Uthman cursed me. And look at my hands and look at my feet. And I go back to the words of Rabaifa radiallahu anhu. Awwal al-fitr, qatlu Uthman. Wa akhir al-fitr, khuruj al-dajjah. For Uthman ibn Affan, nothing else other than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it.